Thanks for joining me again, everybody. So today we're going to make this shelf sitter. It is just a mason jar plaque that we're going to decorate. Feel free to decorate the backside too. You don't have to put these Jenga blocks on here. It does stand without it, but I just put that on there just for a little bit more security and peace of mind for myself. So we're going to get started first of all. What you're going to need besides your kit is scissors, your hot glue gun, um, paint, which I'm using, my antique wax, and this is lacquer by Waverly as well. Both come from Walmart. You can use an ink pad if you prefer. I'm just using the paint because I feel like everybody has that. Um, so scissors, hot glue, the paint. Also, I'm going to use a glue stick. Um, you need a scraper of some type. Or if you don't have a scraper, you can use this piece of wood that comes in your kit. So to start out, we're going to paint our mason jar. Usually I do stain them ahead of time before I send them to you, but this time I didn't because I thought maybe you wouldn't want it to be the brown edges and backside like I do because if you do decide to um, decorate the backside also, I didn't want to do that and waste the paint and just my time too just in case and you can change the colors like i said also now most of them are this brown but i believe there might be one or two that's orange so what you can do first off is paint the sides the back should be fine but the sides white or you can use plaster a cream color just a light color dry that and then go over it with your brown so if you don't have the antique wax you can use brown paint you just add water to it so what i do is i take my antique wax and i put it in my little tray that i have and then i add some water to it just a couple squirts just to get it watered down and more of a stain consistency because I find when I water it down it dries faster obviously but also it flows a lot better and it soaks in just a lot easier so I just mix that up and I'm going to lay something down on my table here and I'm just gonna start on the sides. So this is gonna be your front. The back side is gonna look nicer than your front. So I'm just gonna start on my sides and I'm going to just paint this on. And with the front part, I do go, I bring it up on the edges just a little bit, just in case the paper doesn't fully cover at least It'll be camouflaged with this brown. I don't do the bottom, but again, I do go to the edges a little bit, just in case you would see that. So after you get your sides, you're going to flip it over and do the same on the back, if you're not going to decorate it. So I'm going to go ahead, do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I did go ahead, get my backside, my sides stained, and I did go ahead and stain all sides of, this is going to be our stand. I did mm, three sides of this except for the bottom part where it's going to be glued, and I also went and stained these because I forgot to do those from my original project. And I like to use a heat gun to dry my um, 
my wet pieces, whatever I paint. I just have an older one. I got this at a thrift store, actually. You can find them on Amazon, Hobby Lobby. Uh, Walmart might even have them. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's move on to our next step, which we are going to glue down our paper onto here. So I like to use just a glue stick. You can use Mod Podge or gel medium, whatever you want to use. I find this just quicker and easier, and I've never had an issue as long as you put enough glue on there. So I'm just going to load it up, make sure I get the edges well. And like I've said in previous um, videos and classes, this is my favorite way to glue things down. Whoops. Okay. So then, just going to... Try to get it on there the best I can. And I did cut these bigger than the actual mason jar plaque here. Just to make sure that you had enough room to get it on there. And you weren't struggling. There's a couple ways you can go about taking off the excess. You can use an X-Acto knife or... What I like to do is I just use a sanding block. If you don't have a sanding block, you can use like a nail file or even just a regular piece of sandpaper. And you're just going to go in a downward motion. And it gives it a really nice finished edge. So I'm going to go ahead, do that, finish sanding these off, this excess paper, and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so I got my edges, the excess paper, I got that all cleaned up. You may see it takes a little bit of this stain off. Not a big deal because we're going to be doing the edges right now. So this step is optional. You don't have to do this. I like to distress all my pieces, so this is just what I do. So I'm just going to go into my antique wax and if you don't have antique wax just use a brown color or you can use an ink pad and I just get some paint on there and I start at my top and I just pull down so you're gonna start at the top of your piece and just lightly pull it in towards the center this top part isn't a huge deal because it will be covered but I still like to just go in and distress the edges so again just start at the top and lightly drag it in and then you'll have something that looks like that so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I do it on the bottom too. So go all the way around. And what's nice about distressing it like this is you don't want it to be perfect. You want it to be uneven and jaggedy almost, like jagged looking. So you don't want it perfect. So don't think if this is your first time doing this, don't think you messed up. Because this is what it should look like. Okay, so now that I have my brown down, I'm going to take my red color, which is Lacquer by Waverly. I'm just going to work right from, from the lid here, and I'm not cleaning my brush in between. So I get some paint on, dab it off, and again, just do the same thing. We're going to distress the edges. And you can see a little bit goes a long way. I haven't re-dipped into my paint yet. And it will get on your edges. So what I like to do is just take my finger and rub it right along that edge. So I'll get some more paint. 
and just keep working your way around. And I, you could, you could do just the red, but I like how that brown changes the color of my red. It just makes it look a lot deeper and I guess you could say more vintage. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our next step is we are going to take our jute cord. Now, this is going to go here. So I'm going to set that aside. You have, I want to say, four different bundles of jute. This is going to be for our beads that hang down. This, which you have a smaller bundle and a larger, this is going to be for our bow. So you have just this larger one bundle here. This is what we're going to wrap around the top of our jar. So I have my hot glue gun already plugged in. And I'm going to go ahead. Let me just run my fingers on my edges here, okay? And I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue right in this divot part. And I'm going to stick that right there. And then I like to just cut this right here. And then we're just going to wrap it. So I don't glue it every time I go around. I glue it in the beginning and at the end. So you're just going to wrap. I'm going to bring it to my back side and I'm going to glue that right there. And then I'll cut the excess off. So then you'll have it looking like this. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue this down. You could do it with just hot glue. I like to use a little bit of E6000 and hot glue because I'm most likely going to sell this and I want to make sure that it's not going to pop up. So I just put a couple dots of glue on there. Get my cap back on. And then I just take my hot glue, run a bead, and I'm going to place it down. And then I'm just going to, oops, sorry, clean up any excess glue that might pop out. Okay. Next, we are going to make our little beaded hanger here so I'm going to get my cord out here and 
and I'm gonna just cut these into two. I always give you way more um, than you need just to be safe. And I always put like a little bit of hot glue at the tip or you can use tape and then I just pinch it and pull to the top. Like pinch, twist, pull to the top so I have a nice edge to put my beads on. And I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'll just tie another knot. tight okay and then to start we are going to do I'm gonna just get these out oops we're gonna do one small we're gonna go to the medium And then we're going to do one large and then one more medium. And I like to pull on that one way at the bottom. And then I'm going to cut this extra string off. Set that one aside. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to put some hot glue on the tip. Okay, tie my knots. Oh, I tied that one way up, but that's okay. Because like I said, I always give extra and we really don't need a very long string. So for this one, we're going to start with a small. I'm just going to cut this right away. Okay, then we're going to do the medium. We're going to go to the large. Then the medium. And then the small. And the way I like to do this is I usually have my bigger strand. I guess you could say the one with the more beads. I usually have that on the left. And then I offset. I bring, I raise it up and I have the smaller one to the right. And then I'm just going to go up here a little bit and I'm gonna glue these together so I glued right here so you can see this is that I want to stay about mm, not even a half inch up about a half inch yeah yeah about an inch so I glued about an inch up and then I'm just going to cut it another inch above that. And I'm just going to set that aside. Next, we're going to take our decal here that I cut out. should already have the transfer tape on it. So all you're going to have to do is peel up your transfer tape. So what I like to do before I do that is I kind of eyeball, okay, I'm going to want it about here. Okay. So then all you do to peel it off is put it face down, find an edge, and peel it back slowly. When you're peeling, if you find that it's sticking to the, to the main tape, you're just going to put it back down, varnish over it. 
and then go back and peel again. Okay. So then find your spot and I'm going to put it more towards the right than in the middle because remember we're going to have our messy bow on the left side and this hanging down. So I'm going to have it more to the bottom right. And I'm going to try to get it as straight as possible but it's not always that easy and I like to before I really push it down I like to bring it up and look at it like okay that looks good sometimes I have to reposition it okay got that on and now again I'm going to slowly peel it after I went over it with my scraper There you go. And I do reuse my transfer tape. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back on here. Okay. And then I just like to go over it with my fingers. Don't rub it like this because just in case it's not all the way down, which it should, I just push with my fingers. And you can go over it with Mod Podge or Gel Medium. I'm not going to do that. Um, it should be okay. So next, let's go ahead and make our bows. So go ahead and pull out your ribbon that's in your kit. The wire that's twisted around. I just did that so it wasn't flopping around inside the bag. You can keep it or toss it, whatever you want to do. And then go ahead, open this up. Leave your smaller bundle, you don't need to touch that yet. Go to your larger bundle, and I'm going to cut off. Let's see, I'm going to cut off about six inches or so for my tie. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, get my ribbon out. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold them all in half. So you should have one strand of each design of ribbon. We're going to fold it in half. And then you're just going to cut it so that you'll get two strands out of each piece. So I'm going to go through, do all of that, and then we'll move on. Okay, so I got all my ribbon cut. I did go through and also dovetail my edges on all except for this really small gold i just did a diagonal cut i left these two right here so i can show you how to dovetail just in case you're not sure so i just bring my two ribbons together fold it in half and then here's my folded edge this is my raw edge i start from my raw edge i go diagonally towards my folded edge and you want to go in towards the left so you can see here fold it in half folded edge raw edge and then I'm going to take my scissors start at my raw edge diagonally up towards my folded and when you open it you have the nice dovetailed edges so let's do it one more time bring my ribbons together Fold it in half, diagonally, non-folded to the folded edge, cut, go to the other side, do the same thing, fold it in half, cut it, and you got the pretty edge. So I like to have all my ribbons just laid out like this, 
so I can just grab as I go. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one. You can start with any ribbon. You can layer them both together like this and move on. Or you can do it like I'm doing. I'm going to do one design first. Um, you're just literally going to crisscross. Let's see. And you're going to kind of layer them so you can see. Whoops. Oh, let's do this. And see, sometimes I mess around with it like, oh, I'm going to do this and this. And I just don't know. You never really know. You just kind of play with it. And at the end, it works out. And I do have another bow video. If you want to check it out, just go in the group. I have it pinned at the top. The only thing I'll tell you what I do try to make sure to do. So on this, I have this um, tan ribbon with the gold edging. I have this on my right side. So I'll try to remember to put the other one on the left side. If you don't, that's okay too doesn't have to be perfect it will turn out I promise you and you can adjust it at the end okay let's put one of these thinner and you're just gonna literally just layer your ribbons over each other. And then I'll kind of look, okay, I had that one there. That one's there, so let's do that. If I can grab it. <laughs> it's almost one o'clock in the morning, so I'll just use that as my excuse. <laughs> okay. So, whoop, I forgot this. So let's add that in there. Okay, so I have that one. Let's add this. And I like to go through again, like I said, and see which side I had the uh, matching ribbon on, because I like to have them um, one on each side. And we'll readjust it at the end once we have it tied. So don't worry about all that at this moment. Okay, then I pick it up carefully and take our cord here and you're just going to tie it. And slowly pull it tight. You want to get it as tight as you can. And then knot it. And you can see mine's still a little bit loose. But that's okay. If you have... An extra piece of jute you can always tie it around to get it tighter so then all I do is I go through and I fluff out my bow so that you can see all those pretty ribbons
and then your bowl will look a little something like that. So, I think what I'm going to do, I do have an extra piece of jute here. So, since I already have it tied, it will be easier to get it tighter. Because I do like it to be a little bit tighter. So, if you mess up, it's not even really messing up. You can always do something to fix it. So I'm going to pull it really tight. Okay. And then I'm going to cut these tails off. Whoops, sorry, I thought I turned that off. Okay. So there's that. Now you're going to take, I'm going to get this ready, unravel this. You're going to take this, and I decide, okay, I want about a tail that long. So you're going to take it, wrap it around three fingers, one, two, three, and then I'm going to crisscross it. And then pinch it in the middle. And then now this side is going to be, oops, I'm sorry. This side's going to be our other tail. So I'll cut that. And I'm going to take this. Now to get it off my fingers, I just pinch it in between these two tails and I slide it off. Okay. Now... You're going to pinch it in the middle, bring this other cord, and you're going to tie it in the middle between these two tails underneath. So I'm just going to go behind here. Sorry, you couldn't see that. I'm going to go behind here. And just pull it tight. And then when you turn it over, pull these strands down. Now I, I don't double knot this, I just pull it tight. So now you should have your loops and your four tails. So then I just go through and I cut this. Okay, so before we glue down our bow, we are going to glue down our bead. So I figure out, okay, I'm gonna glue it about here. So I'm gonna just put some glue down. Take this and push it in there. And then I'll just cut this excess off. And I'll just put a little bit more glue to be sure. Sorry if my head's getting in the way. Okay, then we're going to take our bow. And you're just going to glue it on. Right, so that this is in the middle, and I like to kind of offset it so I have it, I don't have it straight, I have it tilted. I need to move that over a little bit. Okay, and then I just hold it there for a second till I know my glue is dry. Then you're going to take this bow, and I just put some glue diagonally, 
put my tails down and then I glue this right in the middle of our messy bow. So that's what it's looking like right now. And then our last step will be to glue down onto our stand. Now, you don't have to add these Jenga blocks like I said before. But if you are, before you glue it down, you're going to want to take a look at how close to this front edge you need your piece and where your Jenga block will sit. And I glue it so I don't have it down like this. I have it standing up so that I have that right on the edge. So I'll get this centered. And then I get that. Okay, so it'll be right there. And then again, you can use just hot glue. But since I probably will be selling this, I do like to add some E6000 as well. So I just go and put some of that. And I also put hot glue on there as well, but you don't want to put too much or it'll seep out. And then I'm just going to eyeball, and then I keep my Jenga block on there. So I know I have it right, so it's not going to be hanging over. And then I just glue that down. Clean up any excess glue. Then I'm going to take, again, a little bit of E6000. Put it on here. And some hot glue. And glue that in the center. And then I just clean up any excess glue. That's one thing I just can't stand if I can see the glue. Okay. And that's pretty good. I mean, if I rock it, it'll fall forward, but it's not going anywhere. So you really don't need these other blocks but if you want you can play with it and put it on there i'm not going to do that I, it was overkill with my first one but yeah so there is our christmasy mason jar uh, shelf sitter and you can add to it which i right now i'm gonna actually kind of rust up my little um, metal lid. I'm just going into my antique wax and dipping it in. And I'm not wiping it. I'm just dabbing it on. And I'm not being perfect. I'm just going to lift my bow up. Make it look a little rusty. Just on the edges. And there you go. And you can always add to it. You got some flowers or some greenery. You could have picks coming out on the side. Some berries. And again, you could decorate the back side. Totally customizable. You could do it for, you know... One side for Christmas, one side for spring, however you want to do it.
And one thing I ask is when you do finish a project, if you would post it in the group so that myself and others can see your beautiful work. And uh, I will see you in the next class. I really appreciate you guys joining me, spending time with me once again, and just being a, a huge joy in my life. Um, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye!